Hey everyone, my name is Chris from Create Daily, and today I'm going to show you how to easily make this fun box style building animation using Adobe After Effects. You'll be surprised to know that pulling off this edit is easier than you think. You have the choice of using either Photoshop or After Effects to mask out the sections that you want to separate. I decided to go with Photoshop and I will link another tutorial I made that shows you how to properly mask out parts of a photo. Now let's get started with setting up our statue. All right, so we brought our Photoshop files into After Effects. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring our Statue of Liberty right here. And as you see, it's way too large for this composition. So we're just going to shrink it down. And I'm just going to see where this lies within the rule of thirds. So I'm gonna pull up my proportional grid, bring it up a little bit. As you saw in the example, we are going to first bring the statue and the base in, and then we're going to stretch it out. So I want that headroom between the top and the bottom of the frame. And if you don't know how to find your proportional grid, I'll show you real quick. You're gonna to go to edit, preferences, grids and guides, and then under horizontal and vertical, you wanna make sure you have the number three selected. So that's all you need to do for that. So this looks good, I'll get rid of my grid. So what we're gonna do from here is actually jump into our Statue of Liberty and go fit to screen. And because we are stretching this out here, you see when I bring down my base, that when I go to a, back to our working comp, it is actually cut off, which we don't want. So what we're gonna do is change the size of this composition. So I'm gonna to go to composition, composition settings, we'll leave things checked and we're just gonna stretch this. All right, now it's time to have some fun. The first thing we're gonna do is stylize our statue. So I'm gonna to go to statue here. I'm gonna type in hue saturation, drop saturation down to zero, and then I'm gonna add a levels effect. I'm just gonna focus on the statue right now, and I just wanna make some slight adjustments to give it some more punchy contrast. That looks good. I'm going to copy these effects and paste them onto the middle in base, just like that. So to make sure that we're confident in the style that we just did, what we're gonna do is jump to our working folder and we're gonna add a solid. And I already have the color selected. This is the hex code that I'm using if you wanna use the same exact one. We'll click okay here. And it's a pale turquoise solid. And I'm just gonna drop it down and see how this looks. And I really like the way this looks. It's a very lightish color and everything that we have in our actual Statue of Liberty composition is very dark and punchy. So I really like this contrast between the background and the actual statue itself. So now what we're gonna do is actually animate our statue. And as you saw in the example, we're gonna start with our base and our statue pushing in, and then we're going to stretch it out. So I'm gonna to go to statue and base, and I'm going to click P for position, go up four keyframes with our statue. I'm gonna hold down shift and click the down arrow. And with the base, I'm gonna click shift and the up arrow. And then we're gonna to go to 16 frames and then with our statue here, we're gonna go up a good bit. Same with our base. So this looks really boring because these are linear keyframes. So let's sweeten this up a little bit. I'm gonna highlight the keyframes, click F9 for easy ease. And right away, it's starting to look better, but I think it could look just a tad bit sharper. So we're gonna click on our last keyframes here, go to our graph editor, zoom in, and then we're gonna hold the handle and drag it across. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna start off with a very fast animation on the way out and then ramp off and ease into the final position point. So here's what that looks like here. So I like the way this is animating in, but now what I wanna do is actually fix something right here. So right here, I see that our base goes behind our middle and our middle is behind our statue and it looks how it should be in terms of like layer hierarchy, but we're just gonna change some things up. I'm gonna put our base above our middle and I'm going to put our statue below our middle too. So sorry if that was a little confusing, but there's a little bit more depth between what we're going to be revealing. Now the next thing we're gonna do is actually create our fill layers and then add some animated grain, blend them all together, and it's gonna look really cool. If that sounds confusing, stick with me. It's much easier than you think. So what I'm gonna do here is pull up my pen tool and I am basically going to create a shape layer that is like a reflection of what we're trying to emulate here. So right now I'm looking at the shape of this bottom of the statue and I'm just gonna basically do a rough reflection of this. And if we want, we can make it a little bit larger. We can change the colors later so that doesn't matter as much. And I'm gonna change this to statue fill. I'm gonna drop it below the statue itself and then I'm going to parent it to the statue. So now it's gonna animate with it. So we have our starting point, boom. We're gonna do the same thing for the middle section now.
The next thing we need to do is create some animated grain. So I'm going to go to composition, new, we'll label this animated grain. We're going to change the specs here uh, to 1920 by 1080. And then what we're going to do is add a solid, it could be any color. And then what we're going to do now is add a fractal noise. We could change it to anything. I'm just going to change it to linear. And then I'm going to boost up our contrast and our brightness. So we get these little, little specks. You could probably barely see this, but there's these little specks all around the screen here. And what we're going to do is animate them. So what I'm going to do is go down to evolution options, check cycle evolution. And then under the stopwatch for cycle, I'm going to put in time asterisk two. And what it's going to do is just slightly change the animation of the little specks that we created. And if we want to see more of it, just drop it down so you can see a little bit more. And so what this is going to help us do is actually add texture to the fill layers that we just created below our statue in our middle section of our uh, animation. So I'm going to jump out of here and go back to our Statue of Liberty. We'll pull up our animated grain. And it's much smaller compared to the, uh, <laughs> the actual composition here. That's okay. So now what I'm going to do is actually parent this to our statue fill and then I'm going to track mat it as well. And right here we have a little bit of breathing room. So I'm just going to shrink this down and I'm going to do the same thing for our other section. Now it's pretty hard to tell the grain right here. So what I'm actually going to do is jump back into our animated grain. And I'm going to adjust the settings slightly just to get some more specs in there. Yeah, that looks better. But now I actually want to change the colors of the white and black space here. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to our turquoise solid. I'm just going to pull the hex code real quick, copying that. Going here to our animated grain, and I'm going to add a tint effect. Go to our animated grain, change the white to that color, and then I'm going to just make it darker. That looks good. And then with our black, I'm going to paste the same code in. I'm just going to make it a slightly different color like that. So when I go into our working folder here, I'll change the resolution. You see how it looks in relation to the background itself. Once again, a very subtle thing, but adds just a little bit of flair that's going to make your overall edit look that much better. So I like those colors and I'm going to click out of here. I'm going to copy this tint effect and paste it into our other animated grain comp. All right, so at this point, we are done with our statue animation and our fill and everything else. So we are going to just click out of this comp and we're going to do all the rest of our work in our working folder. Now what we're going to do is actually go to our 12 frame mark. We are going to split this layer with Control Shift D and we're going to scale this up. This is how it looks. And I'm actually going to make some further adjustments. I'm going to bring this layer in, bring this in too. Nice, that looks good. I wanna add a little bit of anticipation other than just the hard cut going from this wide shot to this tighter shot. So in order to do that, I'm actually gonna create some position keyframes here. So I'm gonna click P for position. I want our end position to be right here. So I'm gonna just leave that there. And then for our end position here, I'm gonna actually hold on shift and go to the left like two or three times and see how this looks. Now what I want to do is highlight the keyframes, click F9 for easy ease. We're going to go over to these last keyframes here. And what we're going to do is bring these handles in. I love the way this is looking. We have a little bit of anticipation at the start here where it's sliding over to the left and then the tight shot does the same thing as it continues to expand upwards. So now it's time to animate some text. So what we're going to do here is start with Statue of Liberty. I'm going to duplicate this, drop it down, assembled in 1884. We're going to shrink this down and we're going to click our little italics button. So this is a little trick. If you're using a font that doesn't have an italic option built in, you can click this faux italic option here and it will italicize it for you. So just a little trick. And I'm going to bring this in here as well. That looks nice. And then what I'm going to do now is create this line. We'll get rid of our fill here. And then we're just going to make like a stroke. Click here, here, 
here. Change the color to green. All right, our design looks great, but now what we need to do is actually animate our text and our line that we just created. So let me show you how we're gonna do that. First thing we're gonna do is start off with Statue of Liberty here. So we're gonna animate this in from the right. So what I'm gonna do is click P for position, and then I'm gonna go to let's say 20 keyframes in, click another position keyframe, and then I'm gonna go about five or, or so um, clicks to the right, and then it's gonna come in like that. I'm gonna click F9 for easy ease. I'm gonna go to our last keyframe here, drag this handle ahead, and then I'm going to actually cut off the start of this layer itself. So this is another fun little Vox tip that I think you'll appreciate. When it comes to animating things like text, they'll have the whole animation take place, but they'll only actually show the layer itself for a portion of that animation. So that's what we're doing here with the Statue of Liberty. And we're gonna do the same thing for our other text. Now what we need to do is animate our line and we will call this line one since we are gonna be animating two different lines. I'm going to add a trim pass to this. Within our trim pass, we're gonna drop down and bring our end point here. And then now with everything being zeroed out, animate it in. Same thing with the keyframes. If we feel like this is too fast, we could always draw it out too. You know what, I kind of like that with the line coming in first. I didn't think I was gonna like it, but I do. So we're just gonna leave that. Now I wanna stylize our line just a little bit. So we're gonna go to our shape here. What we're gonna do is go to stroke, change butt cap to round. It's just gonna make the ends round before they were a hard edge. Um, and then we're going to add some dashes. So now what we're going to do is just set a keyframe for offset here and we're going to go ahead. Let's just say a few seconds, and just bring it up a little bit. So here's how it looks. That's a little fast for me. So I'm just going to stretch these keyframes out. Yeah, that looks good. And as you saw, I, you know, we can increase the number of dashes that we have if we want. We can keep it shorter. It's really up to us on how we want to stylize this. All right, so this is looking great. And the next thing we're gonna do is go down to our middle section and do the same thing. So I like the pacing of having this up for like two seconds or so, then going to the next slide. So we're gonna go up here to the two and a half second mark here. I like the way this is looking. Now what we're gonna do is actually parent everything to our Statue of Liberty, and we will just call this Statue Large, and we will call this Wide. And with that, I'm going to create some more position keyframes. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go four keyframes. One, two, three, four. Set another keyframe, and then go up another eight keyframes. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Awesome. Now what I'm gonna do is go down to here. And it's okay if we're showing our base a little bit. I like that, it's totally fine. Just how we bounced our actual statue animation at the start, we're gonna do the same thing with our transition from this first slate to our second slate because we wanna stay consistent with the overall look, right? So rather than going straight down, I'm gonna actually do a little bit of a bounce like that. We have our first slate down. Now we need to create text for our second slate, but rather than duplicating the entire workflow process, I'm gonna show you guys a simple shortcut that's just gonna save you some time. So we'll go back up to our starting point here on our first slate. We're going to duplicate everything that we created bring it up top and we're going to take away the parenting. So now when we go down to our second, that's where it's gonna be. And now we're going to parent this back to our Statue of Liberty. So now we're in here and what I wanna do is bring these items out and we're actually gonna bring them out a little further. So I'm just gonna take this Sweet. So that was a fun little shortcut. We just made some micro adjustments. Now what we're gonna do is actually change our text. So I'm gonna change this to pedestal. Yes, I had to look up how to spell this. And then we are going to change our subtext to completed in 1886. Man, I love the way this looks, but now it's time to add some sauce. So let me show you how it's done. The first thing we're gonna do is create our grid. So I'm going to go to new composition. We will just create a new grid here. I'm gonna add a solid layer, it could be any color. 
we're going to add the grid effect. We're going to change corner point to width slider. Bring this up. Rotate this 45 degrees. There we go. It's looking good. Now I'm gonna change the color first to our pale turquoise solid, but then we're gonna change this to like a darker color since this is gonna be in the background. And we need to relabel this comp to grid. And we're gonna bring it on top of our turquoise solid background. And what we're gonna do is drop the opacity to let's say like 20. And we're going to add an expression and I have it right here. I'm gonna hold down alt click and then paste in this expression here. It's posterized time six followed by this wiggle expression. And what that's gonna do is add just a little bit of jitter to the background that you see here. It's that kind of Vox stop motion-y look. So now what we're gonna do is add actually a similar expression to our Statue of Liberty. So I'm gonna go here, alt click the position. The only thing we're changing is the wiggle expression. It's gonna be slightly different. We're going to copy this expression, paste it into our wide shot too. So here's what we have. Just a little bit of shaking. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is add some grain. So I'm gonna to go to composition new. We will label this grain. We're going to create a new solid here. We will change the color to 80, 80, 80. All right, I'm going to add grain. And then we are going to change the size to 1.2, the softness to 1.3. And the thing about this effect is that when you zoom in, it's actually like an RGB type of look. We'll change the preview to final output here. And you see it's, it's, it's the grain is actually colored. So what we're gonna do is add a tint effect to make it all black and white. And then with our animation, we're gonna change the speed to let's say 0.3. So it's really subtle. If we want, we could even slow it down even more. I personally like a slower grain. Go back to our working fold here, bring the grain and we're gonna plop on top and we're going to change the blending mode to overlay. And all this is gonna do is add just a little bit of grain just to make things look a little bit more natural. It's funny because when you come from a photography or videography background, you're always trying to make things perfect. When you work in motion design, 2D or 3D for that matter, you're always trying to make things look imperfect. And adding grain is one of those things that you can do to make things look imperfect. Our last piece of sauce here is adding some natural camera shake. So there are plugins for this. I recommend getting yourself a plug and I'm gonna show you guys the way to do it natively in After Effects. I'm gonna to go to new adjustment layer and then I'm gonna just label this camera shake. We're going to add a transform effect. And then within this, we're going to add a wiggle expression onto the position. So now what we're gonna do is just all click our position here. I'm gonna type in wiggle, 0.1 comma 0.3. So this is really subtle. And because we're moving our background and our statue, you can't really see it or notice it as much on those items. But when we look at our text here, we just highlight um, our text alone. You can really see the camera shake move. It's like I said, it's very subtle, but it's a nice little touch. All right, last thing we need to do is highlight everything in here, turn on motion blur, and then we're gonna do the same thing on our Statue of Liberty composition. And with all that being said, this is how you create a fun Vox looking animation. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Thanks for watching and stay creative.